Hey, this is Mike Bloom, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you the very basics of using Google Maps um, to do some uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, data um, creation. So I've got a Google Map here. I've opened up just to maps.google.com and if you have a Google username and password you can click on the sign in button. So remember you just go to maps.google.com and click on sign in and it should ask you for your email and password so I'll put in my Google username and my password and once I sign in Must have typed it in wrong. Um, so once I sign in, um, it will show me my identity. And I've got a little icon here to show me um, that I'm logged in. It'll give me my name here. So I'm all logged in and I'm ready to go. So you'll notice that you've got a search bar up at the top. And if I click on the search bar, it'll show me my last couple of searches, but it'll also give me the opportunity to go to My Custom Maps. So I'm going to click on My Custom Maps. And it'll show me some maps that I've created but I can also create a map right now. So I'll click on Create. And it's going to give me an untitled map name. And I can name this map just by clicking on it. And I'm going to say Poland, because I've found, I have a spreadsheet where I've got um, some information about Poland. I've got some uh, names of towns. I've got some populations from 1900, from 1950, and then 2007. And then I've done some calculations to um, do the percent increase from 1900 to 1950 and from 1900 to 2007. Just to show you sort of a simple um, qualitative and quantitative type map that we could create. And I'll give it a description. So 1900 population compared to 1950 and 2007 is the description, just so that I know what the map is for myself. And I'll click on Save. And now I can do something like um, add a layer. I've already got a layer of my map, and I can name that layer. So I will call that layer um, Population Changes. And I'll click Save. So I've got a layer, but now I need to actually have data in the map. I can add points individually, or what's really nice is if I have a spreadsheet, I can import that spreadsheet directly into my map. So let me show you how that goes. So I've got an Excel spreadsheet here all prepared. And in this spreadsheet, I've gone ahead and I've gotten the title here. And the title is just going to be whatever you want um, each map point to be called. So I've gone ahead and just given the title the same name as the town. The town is going to be um, the actual location. So that's where Google Maps is going to place the pin. That can be an address, it can be um, coordinates, um, you know, map coordinates, um, it can be just the name of a town with the country, whatever you want, but someplace, some, something that's going to allow Google to find what you're talking about. Um, and in this particular spreadsheet, I've got the region listed. And now I've got my data. So I've got, as you can see, populations for each of these towns for 2007, populations for each of these towns for 1950, populations for each of these towns from 1900. Um, and then I went ahead and I ran um, just some quick equations to get the percent increase from 1900 to 2007 and the percent increase from 1900 to 1950. Um, and, you know, that's just a simple equation that I ran. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to show anybody how to do that if they don't know how to get a percent increase. And you can see some of the populations went down. Um, so you get, instead of a positive, you get a negative. So this one, for example, is minus 27%. So it's a decrease of 27%. Um, so I've got this map, I mean, I've got this spreadsheet, and I'm going to go ahead and save it.
to my desktop. I'll just replace it. And now I'm going to go back to my map. And if you notice, I've got this um, layer that I named population changes. And I'll click on import. Import is going to allow me to drag a file directly onto this space to um, put into my map automatically. So I'm going to open up that file and drag it. And so that's a valid file and now it recognizes it and it tells me what columns do I want to position my place marks. Um, so I labeled that one town. You might have labeled that column um, address or coordinates or something. It's some place that Google is going to use to find where to put the point of your map. So I'm going to choose town and I'll click continue. And now it's going to say choose a column to title your markers. That's why I have that title and in this case I just named the title the same as the town because I want the town and the title to be the same. And now I'll click finish and now Google is thinking about it and you'll notice now I've got all of those points plotted and if I hover over a point I can click on it and now it gives me all the information so this is this town of Slupsk um, in the region of the Pomeranian um, the population in 2007 the population in 1950 the population in 1900 percent increase from 1900 to 2007 that's a huge increase percent increase from 1900 to 1950, right? Um, so I can do a lot of things with this data. Right now, it's hard to tell the difference between any of these regions. Um, but if I go into the data area, I can actually see the spreadsheet, and I can search it, which is nice. So I can find anything in a large table if I want. Um, but if I go to the style area, now, right now it's telling me the, that it's a uniform style, but instead of a uniform style, what I would like is to find percent increase, for example, from 1900 to 1950. And instead of categories here, I'm going to choose ranges. Now it's going to give me a colored range, and you'll notice that I only have four ranges, and it's going from uh, light blue to dark blue. And I can choose more ranges or less ranges if I want. I'm going to choose eight so I get the most differentiation. So now you'll see there are seven that have um, negative 29 to negative 2 population increase. There are seven towns, right? And if I hover over that, those seven will light up, and you'll see them lit up with a white uh, circle around them. And those are going to be the lightest in color. And there are five towns that you know are the next on the list, and those have an increase of four percent increase to fifteen percent increase. And then we can see where those are because that's where the white uh, circles show up. And as I scroll through all of them, I can see where the greatest increases are. And I'm just going through each of these, And I'll just do that again so you can sort of see how it changes from lighter to darker, meaning less, inc less percentage increase in population to greater increase um, in percentage of population. Um, I can now add all sorts of information to each of these. So let's say that I click on Bialystok. So I have Bialystok here, and I can see all the information, but now I can also edit it. So if I click on Edit, um, it's going to give me the option to change any of these numbers in case they were wrong. Um, but I can also add an image or a video. So if I click on image or video, I can search Bialy's stock. I think I spelled it wrong. Okay, so there's a picture of Bialy's stock. I can choose that and select it. And now that gets added to my uh, con content. So I'll hit save. And now that's been added there. Um, I can add different fields as well. So if I wanted to add, say, a text field between town and region, I could do that. So let me show you how to do that. If I go to the data area, um, let's say I wanted to add 
another field between town and region. Um, if I click on the arrow on town, on the town column, I say insert, insert column after. And now I can say description. And I want that to be a text type. It can be a text, a number, a date and time, or true and false. So I'm going to say text. And now I can say whatever I want here. Here is my description of Bialystok. Right. And now if I close that, now you'll notice that description has already been added, and I can close this box. And now I can start working on the map uh, individually. I could work um, in that data area and just keep adding more descriptions to all of these places, or I can work on it if I'm logged in by clicking on one of these areas, and you see description has no value, and if I click on edit, now I can add my description. And click save. Um, I can add a picture if I wanted to, so I'm going to select that. And again, I hit edit, click on the little camera, do a Google search for a picture. Here's one. Select that. I can add another picture if I like. Make sort of a slideshow. I can add another picture if I like. and save that. And now here's what it would look like to people who were visiting my map. So if I close this window and I click on this, I'm not going to try to pronounce this name. Um, now you see I have all of these images, one of three, and I can now scroll through them as I read my description and I can see all the information, all the data information as well as some of the um, images. I can also post videos in here if I wanted to do that. So that's how you start building your qualitative and quantitative map in um, Google Maps. And then all you need to do is share it with the world. And to do that, it's very easy. You click on share. Um, and to begin with, it's private, only you can access it. But I can hit change and I can make it public on the web. I can make it the um, availability anyone with the link, whatever I want. So I'm going to make this public on the web. And then I can say anyone can view it. And that's fine. Um, I can also invite people. I can change the access. So I can say anyone with the link can edit it. Or specific people can edit it. However I want to do it. Um, and that's it. Now, if I send that link to people, they can start editing the map if they have got a uh, Google uh, username and password as well. So that's how you make your map um, both qualitative and quantitative and collaborative at the same time. And as always, if you ever need any help with any of this, you can contact me um, at mxbloom at wm.edu.